Howdy ho, boys and girls. It's Raphael here. Uh, so this episode is going to be kind of a th part one of a three-part arc. Uh, I've got three prayer books here, all from either uh, the Ukrainian Patriarchate uh, or the Romanian Patriarchate of its own under uh, under Bucharest, ha ha ha, or the OCA. <laughs> so uh, the first one is an OCA prayer book. That used to be pretty common to find, but in recent years, I was searching all over for it and could only find used copies at exorbitant prices. But then it turns out that not only is it still in publication and printing, but there is one Orthodox seller online here in the United States that has it on hand and ready to ship to you. That monastery being uh, St. Anthony's Monastery out in Arizona, and Ephraimite Monastery, and the prayer book is uh, this little fella from New Veratic Publishing, simply titled Orthodox Prayer Book. I've had several copies in the past. It's a lovely prayer book. And uh, in this three-part arc, we're going to be going over what makes these prayer books unique and why they are a lovely addition to your library. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program here on the internet today. I'm your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs, and as always, I'm so very happy to have you with me today. Um, prayer book nerd culture, it's our thing. God bless it. We love it. Anyway, I'm going to try not to make too much noise because I'm still trying to get this microphone situation figured out. What I really need to do is put it on like a separate thing, but let's, 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 okay, enough of that. Huge shout out to my patrons and uh, channel members. You guys are literally keeping the lights on right now. Um, times are tough, getting tougher, but you know what? We've got the God, so <laughs> let's let's do it. This is, as stated in the, uh, in the introduction, uh, the Orthodox Prayer Book from New Veratic Publishing. This is the fifth printing from 2016. Uh, now it states in the book that it was redesigned in in uh, 2006. So we're going to call this a second edition. I would love to get my hands on a first, but you know, uh, I'm paying the light bill right now, so we'll dig into that later. But it was first published in 1990. Uh, now, New Veratic Publishing is the publishing arm of Holy Protection Monastery in Lake George, Colorado. It's a convent, uh, and it's, uh, it's in the OCA under the Romanian Patriarchate. And hopefully there will be a link uh, for a short documentary on the doc, uh, on the uh, on the monastery because it is really quite beautiful and they are doing a very interesting ministry there that I think, uh, especially uh, all all you ladies out there would be be well uh, well pleased to see them doing. But now that that's out of the way. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. Uh, first of all, the construction of the book. It is sewn and glued. And the binding is rather secure. Focus. 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 It's not going to focus. Anyway, um, it is a uh, paper hard, uh, not cloth bound or anything. So it's, uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, you don't see this too often. Uh, I guess the reason being is because they tend to stain and deteriorate easily, but that's as may be. The binding is secure. Um, it breaks in fairly easily. And the print is quite comfortable. Uh, it has that nice kind of semi-off-white paper. Um, how many pages here? I forgot to write down the pages. 175 pages. So... You have a pretty standard table of contents. You will notice in the table of contents, something that I'm going to point out again later, is that the creed is moved uh, to its its own uh, pages outside of the morning prayers. And uh, as you can see here, uh, prayers for each day of the week is one of the first things, not the first thing, but one of the first things we're going to go over. So let's start with uh, the morning prayers. It is semi-modern English. 
But here is where the first real difference pops in, and I've never seen this before in any other translation of the morning traparia. So you have the normal morning traparia, arising from sleep, we fall down before you, O good one, and cry out to you the words of the angelic hymn, O Almighty One, Holy, Holy, Holy are you, O God. Here's where the differences come in, in all three traparia. And the first one, usually it would say, through the Theotokos, through the prayers of the Theotokos, have mercy on us. In this one, uh, three different ones. So in the first one, it's through the prayers of your angels, have mercy on us. In the second one, it's through the prayers of all your saints, have mercy on us. And then finally, through the Theotokos, have mercy on us. So that's the first major difference in here. And honestly, I think it's I think it's a welcome difference. I really, um, it's a great way to ask the intercessions of the angels and saints that maybe we're not doing. I know I'm not. Well, I've been using this prayer book lately, so now I am. <laughs> uh, and then as stated after Psalm 51, the creed has been moved. We move directly into the numbered prayers. And here is where we see the second difference from a normal, quote unquote, normal prayer book in that the, uh, the ninth prayer to the guardian angel is unlike those typically found in Orthodox prayer books. And, uh, I do enjoy the prayer. I'm going to read it for you now, or you can just pause it and then skip ahead. I fall before you, my holy guardian and angel of Christ, for you were given to me at holy baptism to guard my soul and my sinful body. Through my indolence and bad habits, I have angered your pure light and driven you far from, <clears throat> driven you far from me, pardon me, by my shameful ways, by lies, slander, jealousy, judgment, pride, stubbornness, lack of love for my brothers, and remembering evils. By love of money, worldly pleasures, anger, extravagance, food and drink beyond measure. By excessive talking, evil thoughts, bad habits, and lust for passions. For I yearn for all bodily passions. Even the dumb beasts do not have the evil inclinations which are in me. How can you bear to look at me? Or how can you draw near to me who am so defiled? O angel of Christ, with what eyes will you look upon me who am now entangled in stained deeds? How can I beg forgiveness for all my bitter, evil, and wicked sins, which I commit each day, each night, and at every hour? Therefore, I fall before you and pray, O my holy guardian, have compassion on me, a sinner. Be my helper and supporter against the evil one. And by your holy intercessions, make me a participant of the kingdom of God, together with all the saints, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. So, pretty cool prayer and has uh, elements of uh, confession and even uh, derives a little bit maybe from what you would see in the preparation for communion. Uh, the rest of the prayers are normal. Uh, the insertion of the prayer of the Eoptine elders, I think, is great. Um, my priest uh, has recently told me that I should be praying this every day. So... I'm glad it's in here and I don't have to do any flipping back and forth. So that's that's good for me. It's probably good for you. I mean, what prayer in a prayer book is not good for us? <laughs> uh, so then you have the final prayer of the Theotokos. Uh, what you don't see in here is um, a prayer to your uh, patron saint. But, of course, any other uh, prayers can be inserted in here. Now we have prayers for each day of the week, which um, you can add here. Uh, before the dismissal, along with prayers to your, uh, your patron saint. And each day, there is a separate prayer. I've not seen these in any other prayer book. So these are unique to this book as far as I know right now. Um, I might have to go back and do some digging. I don't recall seeing these prayers in another prayer book before in any section, or seeing them in any service. But they might be. Hey, if you're out there and you know where these come from, Holler at your boy, will you? Uh, so, and then we have remembrances, which is uh, your basic end of prayers where, you know, you pray for the living and the departed. Uh, then you have the creed. And then you get into more normal territory, you know, prayers for mealtimes, yada, 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 prayers throughout the day. It's uh, pretty, pretty standard stuff. And then uh, when we get to the evening prayers, uh, we see some great similarities between uh, this rule and the rule that is found in the morning and evening from the old rite, which I think is pretty cool. So you have the normal beginning, the numbered prayers, of which there are many, 
And then once you get to the prayer of the Holy Trinity, things start to start to change a bit. And we start to see some of the older practices from the old rite. We have this kind of litany of remembrance of prayers and intercessions that uh, those of you that are familiar with the old rite prayer book will recognize these. And I just kicked the camera, so sorry about that. Um, and a, a wonderful way to end the day, uh, if only I could force myself to do this more often. Uh, so we have uh, prophets, martyrs, John the Forerunner, the thrones, principalities, uh, the three great hierarchs, virgins, myrrh bears. Uh, it's all in here, and it's really cool. Um, now, in the various prayers section, there are seven prayers that I've, I've kind of highlighted, set aside here, that I think are uh, noteworthy in that they are not necessarily unique to this book, but are very uncommon. And uh, there's a lot of uncommon prayers that I've been compiling lately, so stay tuned on that one. Uh, the first one being on page 48, prayers for small children. These are prayers to teach your kids. You know, you're not going to hand a kid a prayer book. You need to teach them some, some pretty simple prayers. And uh, so, to God, to the angel, great stuff. Uh, page 50 has a widow's prayer, which uh, is uncommon. You find it in some of the older uh, Slavic uh, prayer books. Uh, prayer at the time, uh, at the death of a spouse, excuse me, which is good. Uh, really, a lot of focus on family. Another one is on page 61, and that is a prayer on one's name, day, or birthday, which uh, I've seen maybe once before in my collection. Uh, and I do have a large collection, in case you haven't noticed. We have the prayers upon entering the church on page 67. Now, we'll see in uh, the books coming up in the next two episodes that these are also here with more uh, of the uh, prayers for the venerations of the icons, which are not here. But you do have the prayer upon entering the church and leaving the church for people in civil authority. And this is a really cool one, a prayer at the beginning of Lent, uh, which I have not seen anywhere uh, in any of my other prayer books so that right there is a pretty cool one and then finally on page 71 we have a prayer before confession and as you all know i'm a big fan of collecting these prayers before confession and prayers for the departed so uh this is it's not uncommon it's just not something you often see in prayer books i mean it's in maybe 30 to 40 percent of the books that i have so it's not always there but then you have the examination of conscience, which is always good. Uh, this one in particular, um, it's kind of like, you know, check the box. And I like it. It's it's very simple and easy to use, and it gets your mind working. And then you have some of the, you know, the normal the normal services, the miraculous to the Theotokos, to the guardian angel, uh, canon for repentance, and then the usual preparation and thanksgiving after Holy Communion. So by the time you get to about here in the book, um, it's from here on out it's pretty normal and nothing worth noting in the translation at all uh it is a very faithful and i would say even dignified modern english translation and uh, doesn't seem too hokey or too casual too impersonal uh, i think it strikes a really good balance between uh the preferred victorian english that some people go gaga for and um, maybe the more uncomfortable, uncommon uh, translation of Father Ephraim Lash that's uh, come into fashion these days uh, because it's free. So there you have it. This book was $16, something like that. Link will be below, as always. Always check the links, folks. And hey, if you made it this far in the video, that's pretty cool. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out this book. Uh, yeah, head over on over to St. Anthony's Monastery website. Grab a book. We have a prayer rope. Their prayer ropes are pretty good, too. I think I got one laying around here somewhere. Uh, nope. No, I don't. I think I gave it away. I have a bad habit of giving things away. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, Sally Forth, on behalf of Spooky Cat, her mom, and myself, thank you again. Please continue to pray for us. Please, I'm begging, begging you for your prayers. Uh, please pray. We're going to try to pray for you. And don't forget to go to church, say your prayers, 
and remember God. God bless. <laughs>